Welcome back guys. We're going to look at exercise three for the uh, batch filling tank on Logix Pro. We just did exercise two. Uh, I made some edits here in between videos. So I made this uh, reset activate off pump three. The reason I can get this to work is because uh, it reads from top to bottom, right? The Logix reads from top to bottom on the runs. So when T40 is done right here. When our done bit gets made, it'll execute the next line, which would be T40 timer timing, which is not made anymore. So the mixer would stop. It would go down here. T40 done would allow power through it, and our accumulated would be greater than zero because our tank will be full at that point, and pump three would start. Pump three would latch itself in down here around that T40 done bit. Uh, because the next time it comes through, it's going to be erased because it's not going to be done anymore, I should say. It'll be a zero instead of a one. So this pump locks itself in immediately. And then whenever this pump is turned on, the output two slash three, pump three, it goes and resets T40. So it's it's happening very fast. T40 is made right here. Um, it latches in. And then as soon as it latches in, this goes high and resets t40 and it's not done anymore so then this opens up so it's very fast that this change this changeover happens it's in one one um cycle of going through the rungs so that i mean that change because before i had this um set to pump one so this retentive timer would hold that value in there and they accumulated in between runs and then the next time you started it would start out with a value in the accumulated and that's just not the, the cleanest way to do it. It's nice to have everything all reset to zero at the end of the cycle so that when you start it, you're starting with all your timers and counters and everything all zeroed out and it's a fresh start. You don't have any holdover data that you, it's going to be confusing for the next person to figure out why that is that way. And really it was just laziness. I didn't spend a lot of time really looking into uh, an alternate method. So anyway, this that's why this will look slightly different than the one that we had in exercise two. Here for exercise three, we're going to modify our program for the filling and emptying sequence. It will repeat continuously once it has been started by initial pressing of the start switch. Um, ensure the run light is energized. Okay, so it's going to run continuously. Um, for this, I am going to have this stop start not run the pump. So the stop start button is going to have to affect a few different things. So I'm going to have to put a another bit in here, a memory bit. So I will put a rung down here underneath to put that pump in. I'll try to, if it'll let me, I gotta go offline. I'll move this guy down here for now. And I am going to move this guy down here too, because we only want the pump to run until this count up gets to 285, till it fills up the 90%, right? Um, and then this stop start's gonna stay the same, and I'm gonna put a B3 bit here. So these are all memory locations that you can use. See, this is a binary table. So these are bits, um, bit meaning a binary digit. It's either a zero or a one, and it's just there for use in memory. Well, I don't want a really high number like that. What the lowest one, which should be three zero. Yeah, three zero slash zero. So this looks just like an output, except it's all internal to the processor. It's not physically flipping a relay or turning on voltage coming out of that processor. Um, it's literally just a, a one or a zero in the memory at a location that you can address yourself. So I'm going to have that and I'm going to have that latch itself in. So when I press this momentary start push button, this will go high and it'll latch around that start push button. Um, the stop push button will be the same as we had it. And then I'm going to put a contact here and I don't need one there. So now I just am going to address a lot of things in the beginning of these rungs based off that. So if you have start pressed, this will be energized and it'll allow the processes to run. If you hit stop, it'll kill power to that and it'll open up the rungs that you don't want to continue to run. The second rung, or rung two, the third rung technically, rung two, you don't really need to interrupt because it only actuates when the flow meter has something flowing through it. So if you stop the pump, you're not gonna have any flow through it so the counter won't keep counting. Um, same with the countdown and same with uh, no, we do want to stop this because the timer, so C50 will be done. And if we hit the stop button and we don't have anything to interrupt this, C50 is still going to be done. So the retentive timer is still going to continue to count. Um, 
So we are going to need one of those here. There. So now when we press start again, it'll enable this because C50 will still be done. Um, wait, is that right? I might not be able to use, I might have to arrange some other stuff here. Um, zero done bit. Oh yeah, for my mixing. Okay, yeah. I was getting confused. I was thinking about the pumping out. But yeah, so the, this is the timer for the mixer. So yeah, we'll stop the mixer and then the counter will stop accumulating its value. So if we if the mixer runs for four seconds and then we hit stop, it'll be at 40 here. When we hit start again, it'll enable this bit again. Uh, the counter above it will still be done because the tank will still be full and it'll pick up at four and go to five, six, seven, eight. So it won't restart the timer every time. It'll just pick up right where it left off. Um, the mixer, yeah, so that's gonna, that's not gonna need anything because the mixer output's only turned on when this timer is actually timing. So when this opens up, the timer won't be timing. Um, pump three, what do we need here? Done bit, latches itself in. Yeah, we are gonna need something here. We're gonna need the same thing we have there. Same thing we have here. Uh, this pump three, we're going to interrupt. And is that going to work? Because if we stop pump three when it's pumping out, if we de energize it, then our latch is going to drop out. Um, so I think I'm going to have to make some edits down here. I think I'm going to have to leave this. T4 done um, longer. I'm, I'm going to have to have this T4 stay done, not be reset until it uh, until the pump gets back down to zero. As I look at it, it's the only thing that really makes sense. Um, I'm sure there's a bunch of other ways to do this, but this is the way I'm going to do it with my current incarnation. I'm going to have my accumulated and my source B be zero. That'll reset my T4, so my T4 will stay done. Um, then I shouldn't even need this in here. Um, the issue I was having was that I would start it, the start-stop issue, power problem was having an issue. Actually, I'm gonna reset it, and I'll show you what it was doing and what I, uh, hopefully it's doing now. A lot of beeps. Hopefully, this thing's like real flaky. Hopefully, it work. it's going to work right. Okay, incrementing our counters, and we'll have an eight-second timer run off. All of our lights are still working properly. There we go. And it's cycling. It's cycling because it's still enabled with this bit up here. Everything that needs to actually run. And then everything else is just based off the things that are running, like the count ups and count downs are based off flow meters that get their pulses based on when the pumps are running. So before I'd stop it and I'd hit start again, and it wouldn't continue down, it would fill back up again. That was because my timer was zeroed out. Um, so I had to adjust it so that my timer would only be zeroed out after it was done pumping all the way down. So in this case, that is when the accumulator gets that back down to zero. Um, and the only time that the accumulated equals zero is right then, because as soon as it, pump one starts coming on, the first flow meter increment makes it not equal zero anymore. So it's really the only time in the sequence that that happens. So here we are, I can stop it, start it, continues on its way. Goes for eight seconds, my full light's on, we're in run mode. When it starts coming back down, I can stop it and start it and it'll continue to come back down. Oh, I didn't show how uh, the timer, same with going up, I can show you how the timer does not lose time, it keeps track of where it's at while it's timing. So we're at seven on the accumulated, now it's going up, stop it, now we're at 22 on the accumulated. So it doesn't zero out like a TON would if you killed power to it. Um, there we are, and it, so it always only counts for eight seconds. I go like that. Yep, looks good.